R. Ask Reddit, asks, what knowledge might save your life one day? Don't ever stop performing CPR on a person until the EMTs take their body away. CPR doesn't wake up a person. It's to force blood to their brain to prevent brain death so that the EMTs can revive that person at it. Thank you for the gold kind strangers. And find a CPR buddy to switch with regularly. Even if they don't know CPR. Coach them through it. But if at all possible don't do it alone. Why? Because it is super taxing and your arms will get tired and hurt really fast. And as said, you can't stop. Polar bears have insane ADHD. If one is chasing you, intermittently drop clothing items like a hat or gloves. It will stop to sniff them. Normal prey animals don't shed whole pieces of themselves. The bear will be perplexed. Saw on Reddit somewhere else. A human version of the gecko tail trick. Very clever. If you call 911 always say where the problem is first. Followed by the problem. If you happen to get cut off before you can say what the problem is. At least the dispatcher has a location to send an officer to to check it out and advise if more police or fire is needed. Example. Operator. 911 where is your emergency? You. Help I am being stabbed disconnect vs. Operator. 911 where is your emergency? You. 742 Evergreen Terrace. Help I am disconnect location. 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 If someone threatens you with a gun or something and they want to move you to another location your chance of dying goes up considerably if you agree to relocate. You've got to throw them off their rhythm. Firefighter training. If there is a fire, crawl out of the building. Do not stand up to run. One or two breaths of smoke are enough to do major damage and require hospitalization, if you get out at all. It may be warm where you are crawling. But standing up can cook your skin and your lungs. The smoke at eye level can be more than 600 degrees Celsius, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can't see and don't know the room layout, crawl with your feet, legs in front of you, sliding on your ass, do not crawl face first. Or you may take a dive down a staircase in the confusion. Get down low and go go go. I remember reading in a Reddit post similar to this. That if you can't do a pull up you probably won't have the strength to pull yourself up off a ledge and that has stuck with me ever since. Yesterday someone posted a live leak video of those people who parkour on high rise buildings falling to their deaths. I dk why I'd watch it. But I watched some of them. Some of those people would do like three pull ups before losing their grip. So it seems like if you can't do a pull up where you pull yourself up to your waist. You may still be fucked. In my mind, if I'm ever in that situation, I'm definitely the sidekick, so the rock or whoever will pull me to safety. The instinct of wolves will only cause them to attack, hunt you if they can intimidate you into fleeing from them. Standing your ground against a wolf pack will be terrifying, but will eventually cause them to bugger off. Tigers as well. Don't turn your eyes away from a tiger. There is a story of a boy that had to walk backwards for three hours back to his village being stalked by a tiger. The cost-benefit of a prey animal even slightly hurting a tiger is not worth it. It could mean a death sentence in the wild. So does it help if I start screaming like a madman? That water you're about to dive into might not be as deep as you think. Always just step in and swim down to check for depth. Then jump. Always do this. My dad told me a story about a group of guys he knew from school. After graduation they all went up to someone's lake house and one guy decided to dive off the dock as soon as they got there. The water was shallow that year and when he dove in he broke his neck and died on impact. If someone is trying to abduct you, fight back. Most abductors will just give up if they meet resistance. And whatever you do, don't let them take you to another location. You AINT Taki me to no secondary location. This works with animals too. Always fight back and be crazier and they often will leave you alone. If there's one thing John Mullaney has given this world, it is that he has taught countless people not to get taken to no secondary location. If the tide suddenly goes out unexpectedly, 
run like you stole it. For higher ground. I read about a 10 year old English girl who had just learned this before going on vacation with her family to Thailand. Then the big tsunami that killed a few hundred thousand came. She saw the water retreat and the other tourists walk out on the exposed seafloor. She freaked out. And convinced everybody to run for higher ground, a lot of people were saved by a little girl who had paid attention in school. They later brought a lot of flowers to the teacher. When that happens how long do you have until, well until it's too late? I had to leave a moving car that was going about 40 miles per hour. I was pregnant. I had a medium-sized purse and a pillow. The man driving the car had said he was going to kill us both if he couldn't have me and was going in and out of oncoming traffic. I grabbed my bag and pillow and held the pillow across my stomach and opened the door and thought if I go like a rag doll except my arm holding my stomach and my other arm with my purse covered my face, dot but everything else I tried to relax, I stepped out and let myself fall and roll. It was amazing. I ended up with just a handful of bruises and scrapes and I was fine. And my daughter is 14 now. We made it. Oh my god that's awful. I'm so glad to hear you and your daughter are okay. Couldn't imagine that scenario if I tried. If you are ever bitten by a bat, raccoon, fox, or skunk go directly to the hospital. There is no cure for rabies once it is fully onset. Out of all history only five people survived rabies. My brother got bit by a dog at a restaurant. Dog belonged to restaurant owner. Was always tied up there. Went to doctor and he basically said. If the dog is still there in a week and acting normally. You're fine. Otherwise. It probably has rabies and you're fucked. This was like 20 years ago and not in USA. If you're ever charged by a moose. Get behind a tree, dot. They have about a 10 inch blind spot and they'll lose you, dot. That's what ski patrol would always say when there were an increase in moose sightings on the mountain. They tell you to stay out of the trees when skiing, unless a moose is running at you. Then find trees because unless you've got a steep hill or are already up to speed. The moose is probably faster than you think. When people say to take an aspirin to help during a heart attack, chew the pill, don't swallow it whole, it gets absorbed much quicker. Edit. Last bit. Thanks for the silver. Exclamation mark. Whoa. I wouldn't have known that. Thanks. Let's have heart attacks and try it out. Closing parenthesis dot. I read about a 10 year old English girl who had just learned this before going on vacation with her family to Thailand. Then the big tsunami that killed a few hundred thousand came. She saw the water retreat and the other tourist walk out on the exposed seafloor. She freaked out, and convinced everybody to run for higher ground. A lot of people were saved by a little girl who had paid attention in school. They later brought a lot of flowers to the teacher. All snakes in Victoria, Australia are venomous. Just assume all snakes are venomous and stay away. Edit. One letter. If a person asks you for something in the street, a light, the time, whatever, always keep the person in your eye line. So if they ask for the time, don't just look down at your watch. Raise your arm slightly so your watch is in sight. I was told this years ago at a self-defense thing at a corporate retreat type of event. And I wondered if it was ever going to be useful or just something to pad out the teacher's session. Then, a decade later, I was on the street late at night on my way home. And someone approached me and asked for the time. I did this, told him the time, and he just kinda stood there. Then he started asking some weird clearly improvised question about how he was looking for his friend's house. And he was sure it was on that street. And he had a yellow car, similar to the one behind me. I didn't look back but just said, yeah, yellow, aha, uh -huh, and he pointed directly behind me. I said, yeah, the yellow car. I saw it as I walked by. So, he paused for a second. Looking like that meme of the woman with the equations around her head. Then just yelled, oh, F, C, K, U and stormed off. It was only afterwards I realized that I think he wanted me to look away so he could slug me. But he wasn't prepared to attack someone that was looking right at him. 
you ain't talking me to no secondary location. Street smarts! Exclamation mark. Honestly I feel like John Mulaney's bit in addition to being funny helped make certain safety ideas more salient in people's minds. I wonder if it has helped anyone. Get your money clip. If you've been buried alive in a standard coffin. Stay calm. If you are alive you haven't been buried that long. Also the dirt above you hasnt set yet. Most coffins are not built to last once buried and as a result have weak siding. So here is what you do. Pull your shirt over your head. You don't want to be swallowing dirt position yourself so you are as sideways in the coffin as possible with hands and feet pushing on the long sides. Push. You should be able to blow out one of the walls. Start crawling up. Do not panic. You may not find a grip immediately. Keep going until you make it out. Always leave your itinerary with someone. If you meet strangers, i.e., potential bad people, on the road, always let them know that you are in touch with friends and family and that they know exactly where you are. You become less attractive as a victim. Edit. Always let strangers know that you have a destination and are expected at a particular time. 2. Always let strangers know that you have a destination and are expected at a particular time. 2. This is really useful when traveling in areas where taxis, tuk-tuks will try to bring you somewhere better. Just tell them you're meeting a friend and they shut up. Know how to spot a stroke. An easy way to remember is the acronym FAST. Face, is one side of your face droopy? Can you fully smile? Arms, can you hold your arms out straight? Speech, are you unintentionally slurring your words? Time, call an ambulance right away. Time is of the essence. Edit, rip inbox. There's a few things I should add to this. Based on what some others in the medical profession have said below. The acronym is now BEFAST. It is adding, balance, and eyes. Also, in regards to, time. Call 911 immediately. But also try to find out when the symptoms started. If they just started, make note of the time. Otherwise try and find out from people who were around. Finally, you do not have to have all of the above symptoms in order to be having a stroke. One or fewer is possible as well. Be fast is just a good acronym that is easy for the public to remember. In addition to a few other people who helped add to my original post. Here is one in particular, https www.reddit.com slash r slash askreddits slash comments slash cj95 jb slash what underscore knowledge underscore might underscore save underscore your underscore life underscore one underscore day slash ebc 4 f 84 slash utm underscore source equals share and utm underscore medium equals ios underscore app that i thought was well written if you're unsure about the movement of a tornado, put a straight object such as a tree or a street light in between you and the tornado. It'll make it way easier to see which way the tornado is moving. If the tornado appears to not be moving, it's coming right at you at it. Usually the only reference you will have is the width. If it doesn't appear to be moving but is getting wider, it's coming towards you, at which point you want to move perpendicular to its movement. Thank you you, start underscore button for clearing that up in my experience the easiest way to check if the tornado is getting wider is using an object such as a light post. If you have to get out of a moving car then put one foot down and take a step, don't just jump out this will reduce your speed immensely, sure you will fall over but at a much reduced speed. The stunt man told me this. I'm not sure if I'm understanding this. But if you're going at a high speed. Want your leg just snap? Edit. I know having a broken leg is preferable over a broken neck, back obviously. I know that. Also, when in a life or death situation like this, you don't exactly have a lot of time to pick which angle you jump out at. Etc. I read this possibly on another thread or even on this one. If you smell something close to fish or even urine it's possible you may have an electrical fire. Electrical fires tend to smell like fish and, when exposed to high heat, urine, or maybe your cat had a snack and decided to pee on the carpet. And if you smell rotten eggs it's natural gas. 
Get out immediately and call 911. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to support the channel, and above all, have an excellent day, you incredible people.